In this video, I'm going to take apart a Philips GU10 LED light. One of these ones that was promised to last me 20 years. It's lasted me two years and it's gone dead. Now this has been flickering for a while, so I knew it was coming. The other three are also flickering, so I know they're also gonna go bad too. This is about $100 worth of light bulbs that lasted two years and were supposed to last 20. Let's see what went wrong with this one. Well, there blows another one. Buddy Chinese made Philips LED light. Um, I got four of these in my office. I think I've bitched about them flickering before. Well, this one died this morning. I was wondering why it was getting darker. And I mean, they're all getting dim. They're all getting dim. These aren't that old, but they're uh, they're just a piece of shit. So let's uh, let's tear this one apart and see why it doesn't work. Still gets warm. I took it out of the fixture and it was hot, but no light coming out of it. So I don't know how these ones come apart, but I would imagine it if I just get in here and kind of pry them, they'll probably fall apart. Okay, so there's the lens, the bezel off of it. And here's the die underneath here. It's just one big, one big LED. Now what I'm curious is... Uh, whether it's the inverter that's gone or whether it's actually the the LED, as you can see, it's kind of a it's it's, it's kind of a parabolic type lens. The, the light shines up through here, but it's a parabolic reflector, which is actually kind of a cool, actually a very cool design because these threw quite nice light when it when it worked, and uh, you know I, I like them for the time that they they worked, but uh, unfortunately uh, they stopped working. So I'm going to get the meter and we'll, we'll hook this up. This takes 120 volts, so I have to find a, a power cord that I can use. Maybe one of these. We'll stick some clips in there. And uh, we'll see if we can get this, test this out and see if we get any power off the inverter. So I've got it hooked up to power. If I turn on the power here, you'll see that there's 120 volts here. Oh, wait a minute. Make sure that it actually does have power. There we go, 120 volts. Put this down to DC. Turn that over. And we'll just measure the positive and negative leads here coming off of the inverter. And we'll see that there's 57 volts DC. 57 volts is what powers the die. I'll turn off the power there. So we know the inverter is working on this thing, and the problem is the actual LED itself is shot. Um, you know, the, this is about two years old, and I, my, my frustration level with LEDs is, is, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, that I'm not, not particularly happy with the performance. I mean, I like the, like the light that they give off, but, um, I'm really not impressed with the lifespan of any of these stupid, I mean, look at all the trouble I've had with CFLs. I've even gone to the... A point of fixing a few inverters that have died on CFLs when it hasn't been the tube. But you know, um, they tell us how, how we're going to save all this money and you know, give us ten dollars an hour, twenty dollars. And these bulbs here, these are about two years old. So maybe a little bit older. I'm just looking to see if there's a date code on here, but I, I don't see one here. But um, you know, suitable for use with dimmers. Suitable for use in open device, suitable for damp locations. So this is a sealed 200 lumens dimmable, uh, 4 watt. It was supposed to be equivalent to a 35 watt halogen bulb. And, and initially they were, but you know the, the, the four that I've got have been getting progressively dimmer. And just recently I've been thinking to myself, geez, am I going blind or is it just getting dim in my office? No, it's getting dim in my office because uh, I would say that they're probably all down to about 50%. Well, this one's down to 0% of its brightness now, but the others are, are I, I'm going to say down to at least, you know, maybe 50%. But these were not cheap. When, when I bought these bulbs, they were, they were probably 20 or more dollars each when I bought them. Now, they've come down over the last couple of years, but they're still... They're still quite expensive compared to a regular bulb, and you know they'll, they'll promise you all the savings. You're going to save all this all this money on electricity that you're not going to use with an LED bulb, and and that's that's fine, you know, to make that claim. And the the problem is that the, the lights just don't last. 
So when you're paying the kind of money that these things cost, you expect that at least you're going to recover the money that you've spent on the bulb in saved energy. And that's just not the case. Uh, I haven't saved any money on any of these uh, energy efficient light bulbs since I started using them. And I was an early adopter. I've got some the original ones. In fact, I've still got one original. It was made by GE. It was actually made in the States. And uh, I've hung on to it. It's uh, it probably 30 years old, maybe even older. It's so old that it uses a magnetic ballast. It does not use an inverter. It uses a magnetic ballast uh, to operate the, uh, the fluorescent. And it has a little starter in it. So when you turn it on, it, it blinks several times. Oh, there, that just pops apart like that. There's, there's that part a piece apart. And here's the actual, the actual diode itself, which is shot. It's just got a, a, a heat sink on it here. But there's the uh, there's the inverter board on this. And this part still works, but the diode itself is open. If I put my meter across there, it's going to show as an open diode. But which it would show open anyway because it's what there is. If they're giving this thing 56 volts. What you've got in this diode is you've got multiple LEDs that are all connected in series with each other. And, uh, you know, it's uh, unfortunate, but they just, they don't last. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what it boils down to is, you know, you got all these little components in here, all these little capacitors couple of ICs, a couple of transistors, you got a bridge rectifier. Okay, you're gonna have a, uh, I think that's a, that's a bridge rectifier here. Be a rectifier diode, you've got an IC, and there could even be a little transformer on the bottom side of this board, if I can get this little board out of here. There may even be a, a little transformer in here. Get some capacitors and stuff on the other side. Let's just take a look at see if I can get this out of here. Yeah, you see, here we go. So you've got uh, you've got a couple of electrolytics on here, which of course we know the reliability of electrolytics. I'm surprised that this isn't what's gone bad on here. It's a Saxon, one microfarad, 400 volt. There's another little little blue one here that's actually changing color. So I bet you that I bet you this one here is on its way out. In fact, that might have been what happened on this thing. Is this this thing may have gone into over voltage and blew the uh, blew the die. I mean, this might not have been designed to take 57 volts. I don't know what the voltage on this is, but that's what we're getting now. But that may have been what happened, is that it, this, this little capacitor here, we can just check the ESR on these things for that matter too. I mean, it didn't burn open the fuse resistor down here, so we know this isn't shorted and we know that it's working, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if the, the ESR has not gone up on these capacitors. So let's just get the ESR meter out and we'll just test them. But I bet you that's what's happened on this is that the, uh, the the inverter is starting to fail and that's caused the voltage to go up and when the voltage went up it overheated the LED. When the LED overheats the actual light intensity decreases believe it or not on them uh, but uh, you know, they'll burn out eventually. So let's just check let's just check these caps and see what the ESR is. So we'll start out with this one here that's easy to access and this one here is measuring Oh, let me show you the meter. Might help. Okay, so this one here is measuring 25. It's a one microfarad, 250, or actually it's a 400 volt, but, uh, or is it 250? 400 volts, maybe. So 20 is considered to be, that's 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 what you should see, no, no worse than 20. This one's at 25. And this other one here, what's the value on this other little one down here, if we can see it. I know it's very hard to see, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but let's see if I can get the camera in here close up. It's 4.7 at 200 volts. I don't know whether we can get this in the shot here or not, but it's 4.7. It's 4.7 at 200 volts. There's a good close up. There's our little transformer. And there's the back side of the inverter. So let's measure this one. Zero the meter. I'm sure that this one's going to be high as well. 
It's going to be high as a kite. Ha ha ha. Let's see where it is. It's right down here. You can see the pins here. And there it is. And it is measuring 2. Point, actually, 2.5. Okay, it's 4.7. So that one's actually measuring still within spec. Although it's creeping up. But uh, it's 2.5 ohms, or 2.5 ohms is the is the limit for a new one at uh, 250 volts. This one's 200. Was it 200 volts? This one was 200 volts, I believe it was. So it said there, 200 volts. Yeah, 200 volts. So for a 250 volt, it would be um, five ohms. This one's measuring at two point. Where did I say it was? 2.5. So. That one's actually still testing okay, but you know that it's it's definitely not okay because it's starting to change color. <laughs> it's starting to, the blue is starting to turn, you know, starting to, it's not a nice bright blue like it originally would have been. Anyway, um, the inverter was still working on this one. It was the, uh, the die is what failed, but I, I have a sneaking suspicion that the reason that the die failed on this was because the, uh, inverter was probably starting to uh, kick out a few extra volts and that's probably what did it but anyway um, enough about that these bloody things you know I, I'm just I'm not happy with them I'm not happy with the performance that any of these these uh, LEDs have been providing because uh, when you pay the kind of money that these bulbs cost you expect that they're going to last longer than they have been lasting and it's just an absolute joke but uh, you know people keep going back and I mean you go to the stores now and you can't even find you you can't find regular bulbs anymore even the compact fluorescents are getting hard to find you go to the big box stores <clears throat> all they've got is LEDs now, granted the prices have come down substantially from what they used to be um, you know that's that's a given because the manufacturing uh, has you know they've gone up and they've ramped up their manufacturing of them but they still don't last and uh, if someone wants to stick with if someone wants to go back and use um, traditional incandescent bulbs you have to go to these designer bulbs the, the ones that are made to look like old Edison bulbs which I've noticed a lot of people are doing that I, I go to people's houses all the time and uh, they've got these nice really nice looking what look like old-fashioned bulbs but they're actually brand new they're actually very modern but uh, they're made to look like old-fashioned bulbs and I've actually put some in myself for over my kitchen table I've uh, gone away I had dimmable CFLs and like this they're dying after only a couple years so rather than spend $15 for a dimmable um, LED that looks like because they've got these ones now that look like the traditional Edison bulbs. They have the filament. They look like a filament design, but they're actually an LED. But they're they're really quite expensive. So what I've done is myself, I've gone back to a traditional incandescent bulb for uh, over my dining room table, and I'm going to use the uh, filament, a real incandescent filament, one that will last its rated hours. At least when they say that an incandescent uh, bulb will last 3,000 hours you know that you're going to get at least 3,000 hours. And that's what the newer ones are rated. They're rated at 3,000 hours and much longer if you run them at a dimmed level. So I'm going to uh, use those as opposed to these stupid things because these stupid things that were supposed to last me 20 years lasted me two years. So that's my ax to grind here. That's another one that's gone bad. This is, uh, let me see here. How many LEDs have I have failed on me in the last uh, year? I had a Philips one that I fixed. That was still working. That was still working. I had um, Lights of America that I fixed, and it's still going for now. I had another Lights of America that I fixed, and it didn't last. It another uh, another LED burned out on it, so I tossed it. And I got another Lights of America that also packed it in, and uh, I had a Fiat electric uh, LED that also one of the it, it was one that I could take the bulb apart and it had about 15 
uh, separate LEDs in it and I was able to bridge one. So I fixed a few of them doing that. That's not possible on this because it's only got one LED. But uh, anyway, no, they just garbage. They aren't lasting. Thanks for watching.